Now, I walked across the first time, and you got real quiet, so I thought I'd try that again. It didn't work so good. Welcome to Tech Cafeteria. My name is Dwayne Greenwood. I am a co-founder and COO of Gaslight. We're a tech company. We build custom software solutions for companies all over Cincinnati and all over the country. Um, we kind of just wanted to put something together where we could highlight uh, the awesome tech stuff that's going on in Cincinnati. So we thought, what's better than getting uh, awesome people in to talk about the things that they're doing and then do it cafeteria style, like old school, like chili spaghetti, right? Um, I want to introduce Chris Bergman. He's our featured speaker today. Chris is the uh, co-founder or founder of uh, Chore Monster. And he's going to tell us about all the cool stuff he's been up to and the things he's been doing. Chris? Thanks, Wayne. Hi. Um, so I wanted to make sure to put our, our, our Twitter profile and mine in particular up here at first so you know who to talk shit about as I do my presentation so everyone can back channel and say how terrible it is. Um, and I just wanted to say hello, Chilkin Valley. <laughs> Everyone's here eating chili. It's warm. It's comforting. It's what Cincinnatians are, right? Um, oh, dude. My keynote just crashed. Oh, I totally had a good joke to go with that, too. Oh, well. Um, so I, I wanted to talk, I actually wanted to take the opportunity to talk about Silicon Valley just for a second. Um, a friend of mine, Jared Newman, who's a writer for Time, uh, Inc., a couple other notable magazines, did a Medium post about Chilicon Valley specifically. Dude, I swear. And, um, uh, and why it's actually an OK term, and why he thinks it's an OK term. And he talks, you know, so he's not from Cincinnati. And, uh, and he talks about how, how uh, Cincinnati chili is this comfort food, and it's this thing that everybody um, finds as, as welcoming, and, and that's how he sees Cincinnatians. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, the other thing that I want to say to that is, like, I think hashtag Start of Cincy is, is a very accurate term for a lot of the things happening in Cincinnati. Um, but a startup doesn't necessarily equal technology, right? Um, and so today, just to kind of frame what I want to talk about isn't, I'm not here to talk about startups. I'm not here to talk about business. Um, I'm here to talk about tech, um, which is something that I love. And I, when I think about Silicon Valley, Silicon Valley, that term comes from a technology term, not from a business term, right? And so I think Chile is greater than or equal to technology because um, it makes us feel really good. I think it's okay to be proud of our hangover food contributions. So go Chilicon Valley, go Startup Cincy. I think they're both totally okay. Um, what I do want to talk about is families in tech, specifically. And uh, Kat, who uh, works at, is on our Shoremaster team, is sitting there shaking her head, um, thinking it's ridiculous that I just spent five of my 20 minutes talking about Chilicon Valley. Um, but families in tech. So for those that don't know, Chore Monster is a uh, web and mobile app that allows parents and kids to actually enjoy doing chores. Kids gain points, turn them in for real life rewards provided by parents, um, like an action figure, uh, canoe trip, you know, whatever a parent wants to give a child. Um, and then the kids also get to collect interactive monsters, so they can collect over 100 different interactive monsters, as well as animated shorts that um, our good buddy Justin Bo produces uh, internally as well. Um, and we really wanted to build something that uh, that connects parents and kids. I feel like that's really important. Um, kind of where that comes from for me in particular, I grew up in a home where chores were a huge tension point. Um, I was, by the time I was nine years old, I was actually on my third stepdad. And this particular stepdad out of the group um, decided that, that work should be laborious. It should be something that hurts. Um, you should come home. You should feel drained. You should hate every second of it, right? And um, what that turned into in my house was me constantly getting grounded, constantly getting in trouble, getting yelled at. And, uh, and as a kid, I hated work. It wasn't something that I enjoyed doing. I grew up, I actually got my, my dream job when I was like 19 years old and realized that work can be a fun, amazing thing that, um, that really provides a sense of, of purpose and, uh, and joy. And so um, that is absolutely something that, that we strive for at Chore Monster. Um, we're graduates of the Braindry. We actually graduated the Braindry in 2011, so we were one of the early classes for sure. 
um, and uh, have been a part of the Cincinnati ecosystem for quite some time. Last year, we took everyone moved, well, moved half the, the team to LA and spent um, about four months at Walt Disney Studios and Disney Interactive in the very first Disney Accelerator. Um, Disney has become a great partner for us. They're now uh, an investor as well as uh, one of our biggest customers. We do a lot of stuff with Pixar. Um, you guys may have seen the Inside Out um, collaboration that we did. That's actually coming back for the Blu-ray release with a new character that'll be unlocked, which will be pretty cool. Somebody that we're really excited about. Justin's finishing up animation on it right now, I think, right? I saw it on your screen today. Huh? The new monster unlocked for Inside Out. The new character. Okay, you're such a jerk. I'm serious. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, um, and then, of course, the, the next Pixar movie, Good Dinosaur, we'll be doing a, a, a bunch of work with. But, you know, for us, back to sort of why I created Shore Monster, our ultimate mission is to, to make every home a joyful place. That's something that, you know, it's, it's a great thing to say, oh, you're going to make houses joyful. Good job. You have a real mission. But it's something that I think we live and breathe every day. We take play and fun very seriously at Shore Monster. If you've ever been to our office, we also take alcohol very seriously as well. But, um, but if you've ever been to our office, I'm sure you've seen the ridiculousness that happens there. Um, and I wholeheartedly believe that technology can bring families closer together. Um, that's specifically what I want to talk about today. Um, I believe this so much that uh, myself, as well as my co-founder, Paul, have, uh, we've planted our flag in kind of a controversial space, um, especially if you're a parent, and that space is screen time. So when I was in seventh grade, an amazing video game for the PlayStation 1 came out called Final Fantasy VII. Did anyone play that? I like how all the get there. Oh, that's it. I get to clap. <laughs> Um, so that game came out, and I was dying to play it. I couldn't wait to play it. And, uh, but we had a rule in my house growing up, and that rule was you get one half hour of video game time every day. So for the next nine months, because it's about a 100-hour game, next nine months I played Final Fantasy VII one half hour every day. It's a lot of work for a kid. And I finally had made it to the second Sephiroth battle, which is the last battle in the game. Is that right, Kat? OK. <laughs> She's confirming my facts. Um, the second Sephiroth battle. And then I got grounded for not doing my chores, believe it or not. And, um, and so I was grounded for a week, and I had a three-year-old brother. And uh, my three-year-old brother was just starting to learn and understand technology and buttons and you know all the fun little shiny toys that happen in the house. And uh, back then. Uh, on PlayStation 1's, they had little memory cards, right, where you saved all your data for your games. And uh, anyway, I, I, I get done with being grounded. I go to boot up Final Fantasy VII, so excited to finally finish the game, and the memory card had been wiped. Right? The struggle is real. Um, now, if I had had unlimited screen time, I may have binged through that over the course of about a week. And my three-year-old brother wouldn't have been able to touch it, and I could have finished it, and um, would have had a great time, right? Um, I believe in unlimited screen time. I just wanted to tell that story, really. Um, I believe in unlimited screen time because I believe it actually impacts two of the three core executive function skills for kids to grow up into functional adults, uh, one of those being self-regulation or self-control, right? So self-regulation. One of the three core executive function skills, um, so these are the skills that adults use to organize their environment, start tasks, and plan against future goals specifically, right? And I, I want to keep it short because I know we don't have enough time, but the crux of my thesis is that kids aren't, if they're not given the opportunity to binge, they'll never given the proper exposure to understand moderation and understand self-control. So what I've seen in, in practice, and especially in research, you know, um, working with Disney and, and, and uh, also through um, some child psychologists at UCLA, is that when kids have the opportunity to binge, that's the only way that they're going to understand what moderation is. And so it's a pendulum, right? And we, as adults, do this today. Netflix has built an entire business model on the concept of binging, right? Whether it be House of Cards or what have you. How do you feel after you spend three days watching House of Cards? Pretty wonderful, right? <laughs> You've been so productive for three days. You've taken a shower every day. There's not Cheetos around. There's not old pizza in your house. No, you feel fucking horrible, right? 
You feel like a terrible human be being. You feel like a waste of time. Kids feel the same way when they binge. That is, that's a, 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 human, a natural human instinct, instinct to swing the pendulum the other way. And that typically is when product, productivity happens, is when the binging has ended, right? And that begins to create self-regulation and self-control. So that's one of the reasons that I personally believe that screen time in particular is a valuable asset in growing kids. The second part of that is imagination. So when we look at our screens and our glowing rectangles, there's a recent photo series where, um, that showed kids staring at the computer screen or staring at the TV, and their faces were just like, and we've all felt that way. We've all had those faces, right? But what people don't realize is the reason that your face goes that way is because your brain's processing so, so much information on the inside, it doesn't have enough information to actually express through facial muscles. Did anyone know that? Right? Um, so that face is the face that you make when you think, believe it or not. And I believe that imagination is completely and 100% informed by narrative. So the imagination that we create, the fictional stories that we want to tell as adults and as kids, is informed by the stories that we hear. We as humans crave adventure. That's why stories are so impactful to us. That's why there's such an emotional journey that we want to take. And I, and I can prove it in one photo. <laughs> so this is me. Um, by the way, don't do a startup because you gain like 30 pounds after doing it. I'm just <laughs> saying, that's a really bad photo of me. This is my son, Guy. And that's Chuthlu, obviously. Um, now, Guy is wearing a Captain America outfit. This is us at Gen Con uh, a couple weeks ago. And um, he, he's gotten into the habit of dressing up as superheroes as a regular thing. Obviously, in my household, that's something that, that we uh, want to encourage. So he's not dressed up for Gen Con. He does this when we go to Target. <laughs> you know what I mean? But what he's doing is acting out his own adventures, adventures that he creates inside his head to inform his imagination, which actually leads to uh, planning and setting future goals from an ex executive function skill. Imagination is, is required to become a visionary in any way, shape, or form, right? And, but the characters, the adventures that he's created are informed by the stories that he hears from a particular company. Now, I don't know why we would be so Disney-focused at our house, um, but, you know, whether it be Marvel, Lucasfilm, Disney, Pixar, um, any of the stories that he's hearing and the characters that, he, that he's learning about are the same characters that he wants to portray in his own adventures, right? And eventually that'll progress into, you all right there, Ed? You okay? You good? Okay, just checking. All right, we can call 911 if you, okay. Um, the stories that, that he hears, the narrative that he hears, is what's informing his imagination. And Disney's done an incredibly good job at this. In fact, they're moving you're going to see a lot more of this in the very near future. You've seen some of it with the start of Disney Infinity. Does anyone, is anyone familiar with Disney Infinity? Does anyone have like way too many figures from Disney? Is it, okay, there's a couple. James over there, hey bud. Um, so for those that don't know, Disney Infinity is actually a video game um, created by Disney Interactive, uh, a game where you can play as different superheroes, different Disney characters, and now different Star Wars characters. The Star Wars uh, Disney Infinity 3.0 just came out last week, I think, or so, um, where you can, in your, your video game, you can be any of these characters, right? The crux is, to be a character, you have to buy the toy. God, they're evil, man. <laughs> right? So here's a couple of these toys, and I actually, I actually brought some, I won't, we don't have time. But, um, so, so Disney Infinity has allowed kids to create adventures inside video games, and then continue those adventures outside of video games by interacting with the toys and regular play. Um, you'll see this way more in the future with uh, something called Playmation, which is, I think it was just announced. It was announced, does anybody know what I'm talking about? Okay. All right, it was announced? Okay, cool. Um, so, <laughs> that's always... <laughs> um, so, so, Playmation is literally interactive toys that uh, connect directly with, with their own sort of software, um, mostly on iPad, where the child's actually getting missions from, in this case, Nick Fury, because he's Iron Man. So, Nick Fury sent him, hey, you have to go kill these characters or, or you know, go after Red Skull or what have you. And the kids actually dress up as Iron Man 
and go and shoot um, imaginary characters. So continued narrative informing imaginative play, right? Disney believes in this so much so that, um, so, so the way Disney is structured is they have business units. So Marvel's a business unit, Lucasfilm's one, Pixar's one, and then there's two, one Disney Interactive and the other Disney Consumer Products, which is their physical toys or anything that you would buy at the Disney stores, Disney Consumer Products. Well, when Disney Infinity came out and was such a hit, it became a giant portion of Disney Interactive's business and a decent portion of Disney Consumer Products because they were the ones creating the toys. Well, actually, two months ago, they merged those business units into one unit. So now, Disney Computer Pro Consumer Products and Disney Interactive work together as one business unit specifically to continue to drive digital experiences into the real world. And when I think of family and tech, I think that's a, a big part of what we're trying to accomplish. Um, I think another thing that we're gonna see very shortly is connected devices. Um, I'm completely switching gears on you, forgive me. Um, Connected devices are going to become a big part of the home in the next five years, uh, specifically around appliances. So this is, you know, I mean, we've heard this stuff a million times, but I think we're finally getting to a place where it's actually reality, where the refrigerator is going to be talking to, to laundry, um, laundry is going to be talking to the dishwasher, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, I think one of the differences, though, that people may not be realizing is that's also going to allow for individual UI based on each family member. So if you're a dad, and like mom knows that the only thing dad's allowed to do is laundry on cold and dryer on low, right? Yeah, you guys are laughing, you know what's up. <laughs> um, I think there will be a, a, a specific UI purposely for dad where those are his only two options. <laughs> That's it, right? Another instance, I don't know if you guys have um, you know, grandparents or great grandparents and they get a remote and really you tape all the buttons up except for on and like their favorite channel. Another instance where dynamic UI is gonna be important as we drive into um, yeah, connected devices specifically, right? Um, to the point that I think there will be a kid UI as well. I think a kid will be able to walk up to a washing machine, press go, know exactly how to load everything, and it will be serviced directly to them. And I think there will be software to power that too. 78% of kids in the US have their own device today. There is an entire industry that's moving specifically towards focusing on technology and the way that kids use it, not necessarily the way adults use it. You can see it, great evidence of that is, is YouTube for kids. I think this is the beginning of a, a, a complete industry shift where there are going to, there's going to be an entire software industry dedicated specifically to the way that kids interact with technology. And hopefully, that technology will continue to drive parent-child interaction. I think good technology always brings kids to parents and vice versa. Doesn't separate them, doesn't take them apart. And that's it, that's my talk. Those are my thoughts. What questions do you guys have? In the back. Do you think when you talk about connectivity and the internet and things, that's what Yeah, I mean, I, I think. Yeah, I mean, I, I, Google's already started that with the, the Nest API. So, I mean, that's open to anyone to integrate with directly. Um, I think, so you're talking more the hardware piece, right? Yeah. So how do, you, how do you get the hardware, a separate hardware unit to communicate specifically with old dumb devices? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, Yes, because I've seen some of that, but I can't speak to it. Okay. But yeah, I do think that's coming. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What else? Yeah. Sorry, right. Oh. 
Uh, there's, a, there's a ton of challenges, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so Disney employs 400 lawyers. So there's at least 400 challenges that I deal with on a regular basis. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's absolutely a challenge. But, but the flip side of that is like, we've worked with Oscar winners at this point, which is insane, right? Um, I know now how to manipulate children better than I ever imagined. And, and I think that's, uh, uh, th so, so the trade-off there is there's, is definitely 100% worth it, absolutely. But yeah, I mean, you're going to run into challenges anytime you work with a big corporation. And I think the more that we, as, you know, nerdy little software people, figure out how to interact and communicate better and speak their language better, but still speak our own, I think that's, th that is just going to continue to add to our advantages. Yeah. Right, Hanson? Yeah, perfect. Um, I, dude, YouTube for Kids is just incredibly well done. Um, uh, any of the any of the endless series, endless reading, endless NBCs, um, uh, Minecraft, obviously. Um, there it is. Um, was that you, Kevin? No. Uh, yeah, I believe that. I believe that. Um, I I think that's really good. Um, there's actually from like a media standpoint, so it's not an app, but like. Amazon has this new, um, like, claymation, CGI, sh like, show, and it's called Fig and something. It's really good. I don't know if any, I'm hoping somebody knows what I'm talking about, and they can say the name, but I guess not. Um, but look, at, Amazon's got some great kid shows, believe it or not, that are, they're, um, I think, like, Amazon, Netflix, like, as those continue to become big media, media entities, that Disney's going to run into challenges when it comes to new IP. Um, so to me, that's a fascinating piece of it, right? Um, uh, I mean, as, as far as apps, those, those are the ones that come to mind right now. Yeah. Yes? Without revealing your trade secrets, how... I don't have any. I mean, Paul and I have the mind of an eight-year-old. That's really, that's a big part of it. Um, I mean, we work, we work with child psychologists. I don't, we ask them questions. If we're not sure, we ask them. We test a lot. Like, it's, I mean, there's no secret answer there. It, it really is just try shit, see if it works. If it doesn't work, iterate. That's it, you know? Um, oversimplification, but definitely, yeah. What else? In the back. How many um, That's a great question. We can have a meeting about that if you'd like. <laughs> yeah. Direct. <laughs> yeah. They need they need to let some energy out. Typically, is yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Walk them. Walk them. Yeah yeah yeah. Yeah no I mean I think there there definitely is like the challenges of making sure that they're they are like using like actual physical energy as well. Right, um, and so I think we as parents have to be purposeful about that. But I, but I, I also don't think I think the only correlation there is like if they are binging on stuff, they just aren't moving, and they need to move at some point as well, right? Yeah. Is that help? Is that a helpful thought yeah. on it? Yeah, yeah. 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 No, I think that I think I've had that before too. It's just, it's yeah. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. Walk them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. In the back. Uh -huh. What do you consider to be like uh, something you aim for? Like a certain amount of timing? I aim for every home to be a joyful place. Okay. I mean, that's, that's it. That's, that's the burden of like having a vision is like I feel miserable every day because I haven't achieved it yet. But, you know, that's part of it. Yeah. <laughs> We get, I mean, we get, we get emails from, from users on a daily basis, yeah, and, um, and the emails are, are pretty awesome. It's, it's really cool to hear the way that we impact homes on a regular basis. Yeah, James.
Yeah. Um, nothing I can talk about right now. I, I can't say this. Force Friday is this Friday. And Star Wars Episode Seven toys go out on retail shelves. And there's one toy by a company called Sphero, which was in Disney Accelerator with us last year. Um, and they have a BB-8 toy where it rolls around and it is a little robot droid. And it's amazing. And everyone should go buy it because those guys are wonderful human beings. And, and yeah, you should do it. And we actually saw them prototyping it last year, but didn't realize what they were prototyping. Like, that's how. That's how secretive Disney is at some, uh, on some things, especially Lucasfilm. They're insane. Anyway, what else? Cool. Great. Hope you guys enjoyed your chili. Is that it? Chilkin Valley. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs>